Good evening, I'm Scott Beadle with St. George News at 8. A man and woman were hospitalized after their SUV rolled on Interstate 15 on their way back to Las Vegas from a camping trip in Zion National Park. It happened around 9 a.m. this morning around the Virgin River Gorge. The 21-year-old driver says he can't remember how he lost control of the SUV. Drifted off the roadway along a curve, rolling off the right shoulder. Both the driver and his 18-year-old female passenger were able to climb out of the vehicle themselves. The woman sustained minor cuts and scrapes, while the man suffered more serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Both of them were wearing seatbelts. A Cedar City man is cited for riding a bicycle with no brakes after he was struck by a vehicle while crossing an intersection. It happened Thursday evening around 6 at the corner of the 1100 block of West 200 North. The 30-year-old biker reportedly crossed the intersection without looking and was struck by a car. The man was also carrying groceries at the time. He was hospitalized for a possible broken wrist and later cited for having no brakes on the bike. The Utah State Attorney General's Office announces a guilty plea from a former Kane County treasurer accused of stealing money from the county. 53-year-old Georgia Baca pleaded guilty to one count of misuse of public funds. Baca resigned as treasurer in March of 2016 after a report alleged she was stealing money for personal use for three years. The state auditor's office subsequently found transfers and payments totaling over $36,000 deemed improper or illegal and a discrepancy of over $56,000 in cash or check deposits unaccounted for. She's sentenced to 30 days in jail plus 36 months of probation. She's also ordered to pay over $35,000 in restitution to Kane County. The U.S. Department of the Interior's Board of Land Appeals dismisses an appeal over recent Bureau of Land Management plans in Washington County. The appeal was filed by Washington County, the City of St. George, and the Washington County Water Conservancy District back in February. The entities feel the resource management plans would prevent construction of the northern corridor. The appeal was dismissed because the Board of Appeals doesn't have the jurisdiction to consider challenges to land designations. The board says it will hear opposition to any decision the BLM may make regarding implementation of the resource management plan if and when that time comes. Community and faith leaders gathered Thursday morning for the National Day of Prayer Breakfast. We take a look. Today we're having the National Day of Prayer Breakfast. St. George is now joining the rest of the nation in doing that. We'll have 400 people here this morning and 19 different religions, which will probably make us unique in the nation with that kind of distribution of churches. It's just very exciting that we could all be together, especially at this time of dissension sometimes in our nation. This is just a wonderful time for us as a community to come together. I think the best part of it is knowing that even though we don't necessarily agree on the methods in the way that we do things, we do agree on the heart that stands behind so many things. And so, yeah, it's a great opportunity to come together and meet a lot of different people and also to spend some time reconnecting. I think it is very important for three reasons. One is it recognizes the importance of prayer, not just today, but in the history of our nation. Secondly, it's an opportunity for us as a community to come together. And third, everyone here has wonderful friends and neighbors who are not of their faith. And that's so important in today's world that we recognize that we don't all have to be the same anything to be good friends and to work together. Senators are preparing to write their own health care bill after House Republicans approved their health care measure. Next week, the Congressional Budget Office is expected to release its score of the House GOP bill. Janae Norman is in Washington with the latest. Next up for health care reform, a score from the Congressional Budget Office. The nonpartisan agency will analyze the House GOP bill, determining what the bill will cost and how many Americans will be impacted. The bill is passed and without objection. The motion House Republicans voting and passing the measure without that critical information. And today the White House casting doubt on how much it really means. The CBO is not the gospel. Uh, they've been wrong before. They can certainly be wrong again. 
In the meantime, the president touting his first legislative win, tweeting, big win in the House, very exciting. But when everything comes together with the inclusion of phase two, we will have truly great health care. Senators already working toward phase two, writing their own health care bill. But Republicans facing sticking points, Medicaid rollback, stripping funding from Planned Parenthood, and tax credits. Issues some Republican senators have expressed concerns over, but changes could scare off House GOP moderates or hardliners, the same groups that sunk Republicans' first attempt to pass the bill. We expect there to be some changes, uh, but we expect the principles and the main pillars of the health care bill as it exists now to remain the same. Chief Meteorologist Chris Summers has your Southern Utah forecast right after this. The weather tonight is brought to you by St. George Shuttle, getting you to where you're going for 23 years. And welcome back everyone, a happy Friday to you. A hot one out there today, temperatures across southern Utah into the low to mid 90s in most areas. Saw a new record high in Salt Lake City. They, they actually tied a record high there. Also seeing some record high temperatures down in parts of Arizona and Nevada as well. Reached 100 degrees today in Vegas late this afternoon. 101 in Mesquite, 94 degrees our high temperature here in St. George, 84 in Cedar City. It looks like the warm weather is going to hang around one more day. Maybe not quite this warm though as we head into your Saturday, but overnight tonight we'll drop back near 50 in Cedar City. Otherwise, upper 60s for low temperatures from Hurricane to Mesquite to St. George, mainly clear skies, south winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now as we go through the day on your Saturday, again, not quite as warm as we saw today, and we'll see some gusty winds as well. Very dry air over top of us, low humidity is producing some very gusty winds out there. 53 degrees to start the day in Cedar City around 7 o'clock in the morning. We'll see partly to mostly cloudy skies by 5 o'clock in the afternoon as our high temperature reaches 76 degrees. Now around St. George and southern Utah, temperature is still a bit warmer, but not quite as warm as we saw today. Upper 80s in most areas, but again, have to watch those winds. Uh, the south, southeast as high as 25 to 30 miles per hour throughout the day on our Saturday. So breezy conditions, we'll call it windy conditions actually with periods of clouds and sun. As we get into your Sunday though, may see isolated showers or move through the area Sunday afternoon. This will be very widely isolated as they do happen in all partly sunny skies. A little bit cooler too. Temperatures dip back into the low 70s and they keep a few rain chances around for early next week too, but eventually bring temperatures back up into the mid to upper 70s by early next week. Nothing but just hot weather in the forecast for your Saturday. That surface map is showing the windy warm weather continuing here in parts of southern Utah, parts of northern Nevada or parts of northern Arizona and southeastern Nevada. But there's our next system, which could bring a few showers into our area by Sunday. Again, keeping that threat of rain in the forecast to early next week. Now for much of the day on Saturday, then we have a wind advisory in effect in parts of southern and southwestern parts of Utah through about 8 o'clock in the evening and around the St. George area. Then we have a red flag warning in effect. Again, dry conditions, low humidities and gusty winds as high as 50 miles per hour, producing some very dangerous areas out there as you go through the day on Saturday with warm temperatures. A little bit cooler though by the time we get to Sunday. Here's a look at your forecasted highs as we get into uh, some of our hometowns for a Saturday afternoon. Again, seeing temperatures back into the mid 70s to upper 70s. It'll be windy out there with clouds and wind and clouds and sun and forecasts throughout the day. Around some other areas then of our hometowns in southern Utah, 87 the anticipated high in St. George. Again, breezy with a picture of sun and clouds. Those winds continuing pretty gusty on Saturday. A little bit cooler in Cedar City than your seven day forecast. Does show those rain chances coming in next week, getting back in the low 60s in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before we eventually get back into the 70s in St. George and southern Utah. Then we'll see cooler temperatures arrive on Sunday. Highs into the 60s. Maybe you see a few showers out there on Sunday too. More rain chances coming in early next week as temperatures get back into the low 70s and then eventually getting back to the mid to even upper 80s by the end of next week. But definitely need to hang on to your hat tomorrow. We'll have those winds up there gusting out there. Wind advisory in effect and red flag warning effect too for much of southern Utah with temperatures warm once again. But a big change on Sunday could see mm -hmm. temperature drop 20 degrees from Saturday to Sunday. So you'll definitely notice that cool down on Sunday afternoon. All right. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. A couple of University of Kentucky students face felony charges after a Mission Impossible type stunt to steal a final exam. 
University officials say early Wednesday morning one of the two students climbed through a university building's air duct system to try and steal a copy of it. The plan was to let that second student in the building to help out, but it turned out there was an instructor <laughs> pulling an all-nighter who spotted the two. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday night.